everybody. Hi. Oh my goodness. I'm just trying to get my life to get. Hi. How are you guys? Oh my goodness. So good to see you guys. Oh my gosh. I'm like trying to cool off because I got so excited about who I'm talking to today that I got excited and I had to go run outside because I had to burn off some nervous energy because I'm so excited. And when I, when I have people who I really love to talk to, I have to figure out a way to calm myself down. So I went for a run and I um, really thought about everything I wanted to share with you guys. First of all, I just want to say hi. I'm sending everybody out there tons of love. Um, Wow, guys, this has been a really interesting time. Um, we, uh, we've been here at home, we're entering week three, three and a half of isolation. And um, honestly, somebody just wrote me, a governor from um, one of the Southern states wrote me and said, Reese, will you please tell people they gotta stay inside? And we just have to keep spreading the word, you guys. There's so many vulnerable people out there and I can't believe anybody's going outside, but thank you to everybody who's doing their part for our medical care workers and everybody trying to stay safe. We have to um, just continue to try and keep our older people inside too um, because they are so vulnerable. And um, But I love you guys and I'm also excited to tell you that tonight, um, there's little fires everywhere. It actually dropped last night, so some of y'all watched it, but I know some of you guys are watching it every Wednesday, and I want to thank you because I know there's lots of choices of things to watch, like Tiger King, which is a whole other topic. Um, have y'all watched Tiger King? It's kind of crazy. It's just so good. Those characters, they're fascinating. Why are we so fascinated by Tiger King? Um but thank you for watching Little Fires, and uh, it's bringing up so many conversations, and you guys, your comments, and the way that you're seeing these characters and taking them into your home just, it's really touched my heart, and I talk to Carrie Washington every week, and we're like, can you believe all these people are watching it? So we're really, we're really um, touched by, by how many people are so engaged in the story. So tonight's episode is amazing. I hope you guys like it. And it just gets better and better. I can't wait for you guys to see how this ends because you're gonna find out who lit that fire. Um, okay, so I'm really excited because today is April 1st, April Fool's Day, but this is not a joke. I wanted to do, for the very, very, very first time ever, I wanted to do a book announcement for Reese's Book Club live because this person is such a, um, an incredible inspiration to me. I read so much of her work. I follow her on Instagram. I've been on stages with her. She's an inspiring person. And, um, and I just thought it would be great to tell you guys that our Reese's Book Club pick for the month of April is Untamed by Glennon Doyle. And I know there's so many people out there who have this book. You have to read this book. It is, um, I just, every chapter of this book inspired me, uh, and I felt like it was like the most amazing meal or rich dessert. Like I had to read a chapter and then put it down and think about it and then write it and then go back and look at it and underline it. But there are so many things in this book that freed me. And, um, you know, it's all about what we think uh, how we're raised, how we're told to be as people in this world, and how sometimes you have to break free of those ideas. So I am going to attempt to add Glennon Doyle to this live. Let's see if I can do this, pull this off here. I have to go over here. Here she is, Glennon. Hey, Glennon. This will be so exciting. I've never done this before. This is so fun. Are you guys enjoying this? <gasps> Hi, Grace. Hi, sister. Hi. How are you guys? I can't believe you had to go for a walk. Abby has been talking me through calming down for this moment. <laughs> she's saying she's sitting right here, Reese. She's Hi, saying, Abby. "Honey, this is a good thing." Hi, Reese. Oh my God, thing. Abby, I'm sweating. Like I'm, I'm like. <laughs> 
sweat because I'm so excited to talk to you. Oh my gosh, she can't handle it. Thank oh. you for having her. Oh, Abby, thank you. And thank you both. Like you both are such an inspiration to me. We we got I had the privilege of talking to you both on Shine On, my show that's on Netflix. And boy, after I read Love Warrior, I was like, I can't imagine that you had anything else to write because that was such a beautiful, amazing book about you're just open, Glennon. Like your heart is open and you talk about eating disorders. You talk about sobriety. You talk about the struggles to find your way through motherhood. You talk about the faith. And now you're talking about how you and Abby found each other and how you found this relationship. So can you just tell us a little bit about your book and who you are and how, why you wrote this amazing book? Well, first of all, it's a wild time to release a book. I mean, my goodness, it's been an interesting month and um, it's such a hard time for so many people. Our nonprofits inbox is just being flooded with people who are losing so much, mm -hmm. um, losing loved ones, losing jobs, losing security. Um, and I think we're kind of a world in crisis, right? We're a world in grief, a world in crisis. And I've been thinking a lot about that word crisis, Reese, because the word crisis um, comes from a Latin word that means to sift. Okay, so I think about the a little, you know, the kids who go to the beach and bring those little sieves and let, just scoop up the sand and let everything fall away, hoping that there'll be treasure left over. Yeah. And I think that's what this moment is, right? It's a crisis where we are being forced to let everything fall away that doesn't matter. Mm. And we are left with what does matter. And I think that's why this book is resonating right now, because it's kind of just about what matters, right? It's about what matters, which is that we just have this one, this one wild life, right? This mm. one precious life, and it's short. And we have got to stop living it to please others. Yes. Right? It's just the world gives women, as soon as we're born, this ridiculous list of expectations and ideals and we spend our whole lives chasing these things and the chase has just left us weary and underwhelmed and overwhelmed and without purpose and without peace um and so i think this book and this time of my life this time of so many women's lives right is just about realizing we don't have to do the chase anymore like we don't have to improve ourselves at all ever again anymore, right? That was all um, made up, right? We do not have to improve ourselves. We just have to return to ourselves, mm -hmm. right? We have to return to the people that we were before the world told us who to be. Yeah. And we have to live with that self, right? The self that never needed to be improved, that always just needed to be resurrected and honored and trusted. Um, so that's what this book in this moment is about, you know, it's just about letting the rest fall away and returning to ourselves. You speak so beautifully. Um, I want to talk about what untamed means, but first I want to talk about how you talk about how the ultimate compliment for women for so long has been being selfless. And you say in your book, sorry, that's not what it is. Okay. Mm -hmm. Why have we told women that you have to serve others, but to take care of yourself is not is not important, is not an important ideal in, in women's lives. Yeah, I mean, every time someone, you know, questions the idea of whether or not we live in a patriarchy, all you have to do to, to prove that is to bring up what is the ideal compliment for a woman. Like what the ideal compliment for a woman, the epitome we're all trying to live up to is to be selfless. Mm -hmm. She's so selfless, right? which is unbelievable. It means that the ideal we are trying to get to means to not have a self, mm. right? And that is because in a patriarchal culture, every single um, avenue, every place that a woman is, what the message to her will be is slowly disappear. Yeah. Right? Get smaller and smaller in body, in ambition, in dreams, in, in, in all of it to make the rest of the world comfortable. Yeah. Right. And we are, we are in a, 
It's of course it is. And we are in a moment right now where we have realized in our effort to make everyone else comfortable, we have become altogether too uncomfortable. Yeah, and right? we've been told by society, by by the way the images that were that were projected for us in our teenage years, and you and I are the same age, and and they they told us you have to change the way you look, you 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 your your boobs have to look a certain way, your skin has to look a certain way, you have to be white, you have to be, you know, the, the movies that we made. Look, I I was part of a system that was like only promoted certain standards of beauty for years and years. And I thought, oh, I can't do anything about that. And then I realized, wait a second. What if I just make my own movies, right? <laughs> and my yes, life, you, you have I become know a lot woman of really is... amazing women that don't look anything like me. And I would really love to see movies about them. That's right. That's right. Look what but... happens when women return to themselves. <sighs> I mean, and there's so right. much about this, about learning again okay you guys anybody who's just tuning in i'm talking to glennon doyle and this is her book it's called untamed and it is an incredible book and it's the reese's book club pick for april which thank you for letting me pick this book and let me oh. share this with my audience because people just love you and i want to talk about how why you called it untamed it's the very first chapter so maybe talk a little bit about that yeah, so um, Abby and I took our girls to a safari park. I don't know why. Um, and like Tiger we, King? Well, like a Tiger King park? Yeah, it was like we were Tiger Kinging before Tiger King was cool. Okay. Well, <laughs> yeah. But you so didn't, know, you didn't know what was going on at that park so when you walked in. And you were like, hold on. Right. Yes, exactly. So we went to this, Reese, there was like this event called the, the Cheetah Run, okay, that everybody was going to watch. And so we got our place in line. We this this uh, zookeeper comes out and she's holding the leash of a of a lab, okay, like a little black lab. And I was like, okay, I'm not a scientist, but I feel like this is not a cheetah. And if she tries to tell my kids this is a cheetah, I'm getting my money back, right? So she says, um, this is not a cheetah. This is Minnie, the cheetah's best friend. We raised this lab alongside Cheetah uh, Tabitha the cheetah to help tame her. And now everything that Minnie does, Tabitha wants to do, okay? So we all watch Minnie, the lab, run the cheetah, and the run, and then we see the zookeeper lift up the cage to Tabitha the cheetah's, um, lift up the, the gate to Tabitha the cheetah's cage. And this cheetah, Tabitha the cheetah crawls out and she's just majestic and powerful and beautiful. And she stands at that starting line, and then this Jeep takes off. And this Jeep has this dirty pink bunny attached to it. And Tabitha, the majestic, powerful cheetah, chases that dirty pink bunny while everybody on the side claps. And at the end, the zookeeper throws Tabitha this steak. And while everybody clapped, I was just watching this, thinking this is a perfect metaphor for what happens to us, right? How if you, well, how did you draw this metaphor? Well, because well, well explain the metaphor, metaphor, sorry for my interruption. The metaphor, I think it's that if a if a cheetah, if a wild, majestic, powerful cheetah can be tamed into forgetting her wild, so can a woman. Mm. Right? If a cheetah can be taught to spend her entire life chasing some dirty pink bunnies that zookeepers taught her to, so can a woman, right? Yeah. And the dirty pink bunnies that women are trained to, to, to chase are be small, be pretty, be sexy, be wanted, be accommodating, be pleasing, disappear, 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 yeah. right? And we chase and chase and chase and chase. And then this wild thing happened, which is that the tab they put Tabitha away into this little field. And then the zookeeper started talking. And a little girl raised her hand and she said, does Tabitha miss the wild? Mm -hmm. And the zookeeper said, oh, no, honey, Tabitha was born here. Right? Tabitha, this is a good enough life for her. She's safe here. And Tish, my daughter, nudged me and pointed to Tabitha. And in that field, Something had changed. Tabitha, her whole posture had changed. She was stalking the fences, right? Looking beyond. It was like she had remembered something. Mm. 
right? It was like she knew. I knew if I could talk to her, she would say something's off about my life, right? I want to run in fields. I want to sleep under the stars. I want to hunt. I want to kill. But then she'd look at the cages and the zookeepers and all the spectators clapping, and she'd go, oh, I'm crazy. I'm crazy to think that there's more for me here, right? right? This is as good as it gets. But and that's more. what happens there's more. to women. There's more. And yeah. it's not what we can see. It's mm -hmm. not what we can see out there. It's what's in here. Right? The wild we were born for is inside of our, our imagination. It's Imagination is not where we go to escape reality. Imagination is where we go to find the ultimate reality that we were born to bring to this world. Because if women and every marginalized group only looks at what's already there, we will always only get what's already there. Right? Which is why every visionary, Martin Luther King said, I have a dream. Right? Gloria Steinem said, dreaming is a form of planning. That's because we, that's what you did, right? That's you, you were like, this is all I see, but actually I'm going to look in here because I don't think I'm crazy. I think I'm a goddamn cheetah. Right. <laughs> or if I don't do it, somebody, no, somebody's got to do it. Why not me? That's right. Because we all have what we were born to do inside of here and we are here to give birth mm -hmm. to it. But we can only do it if we stop chasing everybody else's ideas of who we're supposed to be. And we returned to who we were born to be before the world told us who to be. Well, I want to talk to you about that and, and talk to you about being a highly sensitive person at this time. And you talk about in your book about one of your children is a highly sensitive child. And yeah. wow, I'm a highly sensitive person. I always have been ever since I was a little girl. It was a big piece of this book. If you guys are just tuning in, this is Glennon Doyle. And this is her book, Untamed, that we're talking about, which is the Reese's April Book Club pick. And I want to talk to you about, you talk about highly sensitive children are, we, we diminish them sometimes. I really feel, I remember being a little girl and people saying, Reese, why do you have to raise a fuss about injustice? Or mm -hmm. if something was happening at school and it wasn't being done right, <laughs> I would go and tell the teachers. Like, I don't believe that you guys are teaching us in a way that we're, we're being compassionate towards each other. Or <laughs> I got in trouble a lot. I was, I was suspended. I know. <laughs> <laughs> and but I, I was a, so happy. I was a highly sensitive kid, and I want to talk right now about you have a highly sensitive child. I have a highly sensitive child, and instead of telling them to stop being so sensitive, which is how we were told over and over, stop being so sensitive. I was told take off your sensitive pants. <laughs> Why are those people who are highly sensitive, the dreamers? Uh, the wisher, the, the people who are manifesting bigger ideas, why are they so important right now? <sighs> oh, I love that question. Okay, so I was a highly sensitive child too, and um, I started numbing that sensitivity because I got the message that it was too much, right? I was all, I was too much, um, really young. So I became bulimic when I was 10 years old. Hmm. Um, and over time, that changed into all other kinds of addictions, and my whole life became doctor's offices and diagnoses and a mental hospital at one point. And so my refrain, you know, my deepest root shame belief about myself is I am crazy. Right. Mm. But I am raising a highly sensitive child who also has big feelings because karma, right. Also, <laughs> and genetics. Um, and, <laughs> right, 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 right. It ain't easy. It ain't easy. And um, raising her has made me rethink everything I, be I believe about myself as a sensitive person. So Reese, I've told you this story and it's in Untamed. Um, here's an example of this girl, Tish, okay, that I'm raising. So a few years ago, her teacher called me and said, Glennon, we have an issue at school. And I was like, I bet we do. And she said, um, you know, I accidentally mentioned to the children at circle time that um, the, the polar bears were, were losing their homes because of the melting ice caps. And all the other children thought this was sad information, but not too sad to soldier on to recess, right? But Tish is still sitting on the carpet. She can't move. She keeps asking questions. Where's the polar bear's parents? Who's taking care of the polar bears? Just, Reese, I'm not kidding you that our family's life revolved around polar bears for three freaking months, okay? We talked about polar bears at dinner. We talked about yeah. polar bears in the carpool, at parties. I had to buy polar bear posters and put them on Tish as well. I had to sponsor four freaking polar bears on some online, I don't know. And <laughs> it got to such 
lengths that I actually reached in a very low moment of parenting. Um, I asked my friend Liz to email me, pretending to be the president of Antarctica, saying that like officially the the polar bears are a okay now, all is good. <laughs> and then I read it to Tish. She didn't believe it because she is、uh, sensitive, not stupid. Yeah. So one night I'm putting her to bed, and she says, "Mommy, it's the polar bears." And I was like, "Oh hell no!" And she said, "Hun," she said, "Mommy, it's just that it's the polar bears now, but nobody cares. So soon it will be us."、Mm. And then she fell asleep, and Reese, I was like, "Oh my god, the polar bears!" <laughs> She's not crazy、mm -hmm. to be heartbroken about the polar bears. The rest of us are crazy not to be heartbroken about the polar bears, right? Right. Right. Like in most cultures, Reese, people like you, people like your child, people like Tish and me, are are labeled early, right? They are we are considered eccentric but crucial to the survival of the tribe because we are the clergy, the poets, the medicine men, the shaman. We are people who、um, can see things that other people won't see. And、mm -hmm. are willing to feel things that other people won't feel, right? Right. But in our culture, we're so hell bent on efficiency and speed that it is easier to call us broken and dismiss us、mm -hmm. than to realize that we are responding appropriately to a broken world. Right. Right. We are the ones on the Titanic yelling "iceberg, iceberg," and everyone else is like, "We just want to keep dancing." <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> So what I realized, I looked at my little girl and I thought, oh, she's not broken; she's a prophet. Right. She's a prophet. Which made me realize she's a prophet. Which made me realize that I was never broken either. Right. I no longer think that either of us were ever too much. Right.、Mm -hmm. I think that our muchness was created for just such a time as this. Right. Right. Because the sensitivity that made us a little weird is also what makes us good artists. Yeah. Right. And the fire that we have inside of us that makes us a little sweaty before interviews、yeah. is also is what makes us good activists. Right, right. It's also I have such deep care, and I want to say that if people, if, if anybody's joining right now, this is Glennon Doyle. We're talking about her book Untamed, which is the the April Reese's Book Club pick, Glennon. I've been first of all. I've been lucky enough to meet you and talk on stages with you and Abby. Everybody, say hi to Abby, Glennon's wife. Who's come here? Right、she's, over there. Say hi, Abby. She's standing right here. This is my this is my emotional support wife. Oh <laughs> my god! Emotional support dogs. Abby's also written amazing books that everyone should read that are so inspiring. Um, I I wanted to say this 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 quote just because I really I wanted to say one of your quotes from your book that just really moved me because it just speaks to right now. It's、um, hold on, I'm gonna give you the page number. It's ninety three, and it said, "If you are uncomfortable, in deep pain, angry, yearning, confused, you don't have a problem. You have a life." Being human is not hard because you're doing it wrong; it's hard because you're doing it right. You will never change the fact that being human is hard, so you must change your idea that it was ever supposed to be easy. And I mean, I'm crying right now because we also want to make our children's lives so easy. We want to make our lives easy, but the truth is, is like being human is just hard. It doesn't matter where you live. Where you're from, what you're dealing with,、um, Brene Brown beautifully speaks about. Don't compare your grief to others; just grieve、mm -hmm. and hold place for each other to be in great space to grieve what you lost. If that's just you're 16 years old and you lost your graduation or your prom, a, that is a grief that you you have to、mm -hmm. grieve. Or if your parent、mm -hmm. is sick in the hospital right now, I have so many friends whose parents. God bless are in the hospital and they are so worried. Like that is real too. Everybody's level of grief right now is so real. And I want you to talk a little bit about like holding, letting yourself feel sad. <laughs> yeah. Well, so I learned that feelings were for feeling at my fifth recovery meeting. Okay, when I got sober. Right. So. So I started drinking because life is really painful. Okay. 
Yeah. So then for 15 years, it's so painful. And then for 15 years, people wanted me to get sober. And then I got sober and was like, oh yeah, I remember why I was drinking. Cause this, <laughs> being human is terrible. Right. So, so I go to this meeting and I finally get brave enough to speak. And I said, listen, I'm Glennon and I'm an alcoholic and I've been sober for six days and um, I feel awful. Mm. And I think that I must be missing some kind of secret to life that everyone else has because I can't seem to do it right. It just hurts so much and I'm missing something. And then I sat back down and this woman came up to me afterwards and she said, hi, I just want to tell you something that someone told me in the beginning, which is that... Um, you're not doing it wrong. You're finally doing it right. Yeah. Right? You're showing up for life and you're not numbing anymore and you're feeling all your feelings and that's just really freaking hard. Yeah. Like life is really freaking hard for people who are doing it well. Right? For people who are showing up and caring the most amount and letting their hearts break open. It just hurts and still all feelings are for feeling, right. right? Even, I didn't know that, Reese. Like, our culture teaches us that happiness is for feeling. Mm -hmm. And grief and anger and envy and all of those things are for numbing and for mm -hmm. denying and for deflecting. Right, right because so, so many times kind of we grew up with parents who didn't know how to handle it and God bless them, didn't get a lot of tools in their toolbox to handle this stuff. But I think that's what this book really, this really made me think, you know, about the, all those feelings that we're, we're told are uncomfortable. First of all, they pass, right? Mm -hmm. You let them move through your body. They're gonna go in and out like a wave. And actually just feelings are for feeling. You say it so beautifully in this book. Um, and they change us, right? Yes. They change us. I mean, yeah. that's what nobody tells us about pain is that there's a reward for feeling it, right? There is a reward for feeling it. And the reward is that it transforms you. You know, we're all trying to transport ourselves out of our pain. And yeah. the price of transporting ourselves is that we miss all of our transformation. We are in a collective cocoon right now of grief, right? And yeah. that's why we're exhausted. It's not because we're lazy. It's because the internal work that's happening inside of us right now to transform into whatever we're going to be next after this takes all of us. Yeah. And so it's a surrendering right now to the cocoon. Oh, somebody on here just said, Fred, feelings are like visitors. Let them come and go. I know that, that's a really good thing to say. That's I never heard that with gifts. Yeah. See, right. they're like all these amazing people are, delivery people. All of these people showing up for this conversation. People want community. I want to tell people following you on Instagram is such a beautiful thing. You used to be a school teacher. Right? Mm -hmm. yeah, what were your, right. your students? What grade were they in? So I was third grade, kindergarten and preschool. And it was the best, most important job I've ever had in my life. I still think about it every day. And I'm still, I still think, okay, you're still a teacher. You're just a teacher for grownups now. Yeah. Um, but yeah, those were the days. You are Teachers a teacher. You are, you are teaching all of us so much and also... So many of us need to remember who we were when we were little <laughs> so that we can go back and say, hey, little Glennon, hey, little Reese, like those things you didn't get, you can give them to yourself now. Yes. If somebody told you you were too sensitive or I was always told I was too much, I had too many opinions, I was too loud, <laughs> talked too much, and I grew up thinking you're too much, tone it down, sister. Pump the brakes. Your excitement is too much. Your enthusiasm. You 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 you're too much for all of us. And I I really took from this book a lot about um, just accepting that that is actually what makes me me. You know. Um, and and I want to just repeat for everybody. I'm here with Glennon Doyle. This is her book, Untamed. And this book is um, I said it earlier when I when I started this Instagram live, but it was like for me. This is my experience reading your book. Um, it was like <laughs> the most delicious dessert, but it was it was a very like rich dessert. So I had to eat a chapter at a time, and I ha I had to put it down because it was a lot. In each, yeah. each chapter, you either tell this, a story that, that really illuminated something for you about your, your, the way you're parenting now, which is also something I think is so beautiful. And I would love to talk about oh, yeah. parenting like a braid. 
Um, mm. But I just took in each chapter. Um, and I think it's a great book for, for April because we are all going to be inside. Everybody, please stay home and keep our most vulnerable safe. And please help out the medical community that is just working so hard right now to keep us safe. Stay home and, and read beautiful books. And I have to tell you, I know you're a teacher. A thing that I've been doing is read. I got these great classic books. They're called mm -hmm. Classic Starts, and I've been reading classics to my seven-year-old, and we're mm -hmm. reading Swiss Family Robinson. When would I ever have the time to do that? That's what? right. That's amazing. I, I, fall, I fall victim to the I'm busy. I'm busy. Uh, guys, I'm busy. I can't. No, I can't go mm -hmm. out on Friday night. I'm busy. Busy. You know, and this, this is the universe has told me, slow down. Do all those yeah. things that you haven't had your dream. Like, Oh, it's such a great time to, to be, I, I want to talk to you a little bit about parenting right now in a family where your husband has the kids part of the time and you and Abby have the kids part of the time and I'm doing that as well. What does that mean to parent like a braid? And mm -hmm. I, I love that you say that. And so many people do not have that um, yeah. Yeah. understanding so okay. can you talk to us a little that is an ideal that a lot of people would hope for but how did you initiate that well I mean I think that we went through this whole our marriage a divorce and the blending of our new family very deliberately and with as much kind of honesty as we could muster um, I almost did not follow the love of my life. I almost did not honor myself. I almost abandoned myself again after I fell in love with Abby because um, I thought that a good mother doesn't break up her family. Mm. Right? I just had been, that had been tamed. I had been tamed in that, with that ideal. Same. And then one day I, yeah, that I could I was be the a first person to be divorced in my family and it was really hard. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because a good good mom. So um, one day I was braiding Tish's hair, and I looked at her and I thought, I am staying in this marriage for her, but would I want this marriage for her? Mm. And if I would not want this marriage for my daughter, then why am I modeling bad love and calling it good mothering? Mm, yes. Okay. okay, say that. Modeling bad love. And calling that good mothering. And call that right? good mothering. Because good mothers so, stay. Right, good mothers stay. So you... So the reason... Right. The reason is because there's the dirty pink bunny mm -hmm. that we've all been chasing that somebody else made for us. That is, mothers are martyrs. Right? That a good mother, what a good mother does is just slowly buries herself, right? Her, her, her emotions, her desire, her ambition, her dreams. She just slowly dies in honor of her children. Exactly. Right? What a, like right. what a burden for, mm -hmm. for the children of martyr mothers to bear, to be the reason that their mother stopped living, right? And yeah. to know that one day if they decide to be mothers, they also will have to slowly die mm -hmm. because if we hold up martyrdom as the epitome of motherhood, our children will spend their lives trying to meet that criteria also. Dirty pink right. bunnies, right? And so do you what you want that for your kids? What do you no. want for them? Right, right. And so, and so untaming, becoming untamed is, it's re-examining, it's digging out all of these poisonous roots that were, were, were planted beneath us, that were planted there by people to control us, like the idea that love is martyrdom, right? Motherhood is not... A good mother is not a martyr. A good mother is a model, right? Yes. Our children will only allow themselves to live um, as fully as we allow ourselves to live. So, so good mothering is about never settling for any conversation, relationship, institution, nation, less true and beautiful than the one we would want for our babies. Yeah. Right? But, but we can no longer use our children as an excuse not to be brave with our lives. Oh, thank you for saying that. Thank you. Look, I know a lot of people stay in things um, because they think they're doing what's right for the children, and that's something we were told a long, long time. 
But I do want to say to all the people out there who are struggling in relationships and really struggling, is this the right thing? And so many people are really mm -hmm. facing their shadow right now, right? Yeah. Facing that, looking at the truth right now. And you're seeing yeah. the truth. If it's hard to be in it, you're looking at the truth. And, and mm -hmm. we're all going to come to, this is a time of really looking at things. But I do want to say, like, it was so hard for me getting divorced. We talk about this in our Shine On show on Netflix. Yeah. But you have to make a choice. Like, are you showing your kids what what relationships look like and what what you would want for them? And I urge people to read your book, Untamed, talk about the truth and finding who you are beyond what the world has told you to be. And that is that is your journey in your life to find out who you are supposed to be, not who the world wants you to be. Not who your parents want you to be, who you are supposed to be. And when you unlock that and, and untame yourself, you are actually becoming the best parent for your people, as you say, in this book. And I just think this book is a liberation. It's so beautiful. And I just, I want to know if there's anything, we're, we're going to wrap this up because I know people have stuff they have to do and get on with their lives. Yeah. And we'll share this conversation later. And also, I want to tell everybody, We'll keep talking, um, but Glenna, I just think, I want to say thank you for sharing, but I just want to know if there's any sort of final thoughts that you want to share with everybody about your book. Okay. No, I'm just, I'm just so grateful. I mean, beyond this, beyond this amazing thing you've done for this book, which means just the absolute world to me because creatively this is my heart. Everything I've, it's been on the tip of my tongue since I was 10 years old is in this book, but I also, what I want you to know, Reese, is the, is as you have untamed yourself and created what, this is what happens, right? When women actually unleash themselves, when they stop believing that they're too much or that they're not enough and they actually go inside and create the thing they were meant to create, it changes the world. And what you're doing, I mean, I can't, every time we turn on one of your, I know I'm not supposed to be doing this. Just let me say this real quick. Every time we turn on one of your new sh shows, I'm scared because I'm like, there's no way it can be as good. Like, it oh. can't be as good. Like, right? Like. We got Big Little Lies, then we've got the morning show. So we turn on Little Fires Everywhere. We're like, okay, it can't. Thank Freaking you. Freaking home run. The Thank layers. Thank you. The, the, the layers, the race stuff, the class stuff, the sex stuff, the parent, the parenting stuff, the friendship stuff. It's just like exhausting. It's so good. And, and Carrie Washington. Anyway. Just thank, thank you, you for everything that you're doing. Oh, well, thank you, Glennon. I so appreciate it. And, and the other thing I learned from your book is accept compliments. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, don't go, not me, not me, because then you diminish another woman's, her biggest gifts, right? I, I'm going to hold that space because there are other women who need to see me holding that space and going, thank you for that compliment. That's I really it. appreciate That's it. it. And I did. I worked really hard on these shows. So thank you for loving them. And thank you, everybody out there for watching. Um, and okay. thank you for reading with us. If anybody wants any, we're going to have more follow-up conversation on Reese's Book Club. Follow Glennon Doyle. Read Untamed. Glennon, we're going to be okay, right? We're going to be we're okay. Gonna, we're going to be okay. Yeah. We're going to lose, but we're going to gain. We're going to be more yeah. connected than ever. We're going to come out of this new... And it's all going to be brutal and beautiful. It's going to be brutal. <laughs> brutal. Come say bye to me. <laughs> Abby wants to say bye. We love Abby, you. We you're love the greatest. You. Keep sharing every, every beautiful, positive thought y'all have. I just love it. I just love it. Same and same. the funny. Share the funny, too, because we love that. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've got that. That's we've got we got. that. Yeah. It's important. Okay. Love y'all. Love Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Have a great day. You, too. Bye.